Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to another series of Terra Invicta. It is going to be the Project Exodus faction. I am very interested to see how these guys play. I haven't played them before and it's going to be a completely different experience relative to my humanity first experience. The objective is to escape the aliens by sending humans to other stars. Considering that it's 2022 in-game, at least that's where we're starting, our technology is nowhere near what we're going to need. Now I'm going to take the lessons that I have learned from the Humanity First playthrough from my off-screen own playthrough and try to do a lot better than I did before. Let's see about customizing the faction. Uh, I'm going to be the director. The fleet names are going to be uh, Task Force. And yes, I'm okay with calling the group Project Exodus, that's fine. Alright, let's begin. We remember the day the stars answered. The day we learned we were not alone. As a familiar sun rose on an unfamiliar universe, some of us saw wondrous possibility and others existential danger. The astronomers had insisted that the bright streak in the sky was no natural phenomenon. Most of us didn't really believe them until it burned through our atmosphere and crashed in a remote region, leaving only wreckage and uncertainty. ignorance we fractured, taking refuge in our most primal emotions. Each of us saw what we wanted to see. It is disconcerting at first to awaken to an unfamiliar home, to open your eyes and see that everything you knew has changed forever. But unease has long been the price of wisdom. There comes a time when we must accept change, no matter how great. There comes a time when we must all leave home. So, Project Exodus. I don't believe that there's so much a, um, shall we say, cowardly faction, in the sense that their motto is run the fuck away. I believe that they are a bit more like Elon Musk, trying to figure out how we can make humanity a multiplanetary or even in this case, multi-star uh, species. So, the alien has crashed on Earth in the Manaus region in Brazil. We're going to be investigating that. The Council has appointed you leader of our organization. I am Khalid Alashgar, your deputy administrator. The alien crash landing represents both great opportunity and great danger. As such, we have formed a small group drawn from those with particular expertise in astrophysics, intelligence analysis, and space exploration. We must learn what these creatures are, where they came from, and what they plan to do on Earth. I recommend we send a counselor to investigate the crash site in the Manaus region as soon as possible. Our other counselors may be used in trying to gain influence in nations that may be able to contribute resources to our cause. You may review our objectives at any time, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Have a counselor conduct the investigate alien missions. Yes. All right, so what's going to be different about this playthrough? In the previous playthrough, I was rather indiscriminately targeting factions. I was indiscriminately going for all sorts of different counselors, stations, habs. Um, I pissed off a lot of factions. This time, I don't want to do that. Or at least not as much. As humanity first, it makes sense. As Project Exodus, it might not make as much sense. So I'm going to go about it in a different way. I'm going to try and either figure out what factions are already against me and just work against them, or I might go for a different approach and try to work with as many factions as possible. That at least means I'll not be sabotaged as often. As for uh, the region that I'm trying to take, I would love to take the US this time around. I have not yet been successful in that in previous playthroughs. And taking the US gives you a very powerful army. It gives you a lot of boost. It gives you 28 nukes in case push really comes to shove. You can start nuking people. And all of these also give you a ton of research per month. So taking the US will not be easy. Right now they don't really know what to think about the aliens. I have a 3% support here, the highest that is the academy at 6%, so we're going to have to sway their opinion a lot. The problem is I only have two counselors. I have uh, Raymond Molenaar, a Dutch guy. He's a scientist, which makes sense. 
fairly high science stat at 8. Um, currently, I don't have the influence to get any factions yet, except for Jolt Games, which <laughs> immediately allows me to assault alien assets. That's a bit fast. I'm not sure why Jolt Games is allowing you to assault an alien asset, but all right. Uh, the other guy that I have is Satkartar Smita, another scientist. This is not great, because this guy has four persuasion, but I'm going to need quite a bit more. It does, however, mean that my research, early game, I think, is quite good. So I might be able to make that work for me. Now, if I want to start taking over terrain, if I want to start taking over territory, we get a pretty good lead here, because it's my home faction, if you will, my home territory. Um, the rest of the group here is mostly in favor of the academy, and I'm not really interested in trying to take the, the Benelux first and then go for the additional regions making the EU, I want to take North America. Uh, yes, that's North America as a whole. In order to do that, we're first going to have to sway opinion. And trying to grab the US right from the get-go is uh, fairly impossible. Even with maximum influence, I have a 0% chance of success. When it comes to Mexico, it's a bit better. I'm going to start working my way up from Belize, from Guatemala, and make my way north. This way, I'll constantly have a bit of sway over the territory and be able to take control over it. Standing by for orders. Um, as soon as possible, I'm going to have to recruit another counselor. But right now... Well, actually, this guy might be an option. Crispin Duhu. He has six persuasion. I would love to get an eight, but I don't get that much. I get a monthly of 11. Hmm... This guy could be useful. He is, however, an addict. Monthly income minus one. Espionage from being detected is bad. Security is awful. He is affluent. So that kind of fixes his addiction, <laughs> if you will. Um, low profile and Pollyanna. Sunny outlook. Okay. I'd rather get this guy, the activist, also because it gives me a controller over China and arguably Grace. I think is the best fit. She doesn't have the highest persuasion stat, but she does hail from the United States itself. That's what I want. So she's going to be my first hire. Up until that point, we're going to have to use the guys that we have to make something work. And the only thing I can try and do is take control over nations, because I simply cannot run a campaign with either of these guys, which is lovely. Okay, uh, the lowest persuasion stat is going to go and investigate the alien activity. We are going to try and take control over Belize here. So one control point, it should be fairly easy. Research-wise, I want to try and constantly work on further space science. I want to take charge of where this tech tree is going. Because eventually we're going to have to try and get off the planet as a whole not just to build a station. So I'm going to dedicate all of my research there and just 25% in... Well, audience research is okay. Gives me a bit of influence. Allows me to hire more counselors faster. So let's go for that. All right. Um, confirm the assignments and let's start running the clock. Soon, of course, we get our first pop-up. The UN Security Council meets. Do I want to stay in the shadows? Steer some support? which does gain me quite a bit of influence. Or do I just publish my manifesto and say, hey guys, here we are and this is the plan. Uh, a great deal of information about Project Exodus will be exposed. I think this is fine, because I don't believe that I have a lot of enemies at the moment. There's the resistance, the initiative. How do these guys perceive me? Relations. Tolerance. Yeah, tolerance, that's fine. Tolerance, okay. So we're not at odds with these guys at all. And this immediately allows me to hire that counselor that I want, Grace. Now, Grace, you're going to be joining in the next round. Um, something I forgot to mention is that we have Changong Station. This is a station that when you're playing Project Exodus, you start out with. The problem is, if I want to actually do anything useful with this, like add a research lab, I'm going to need Boost, which I do not have. So that's a bit of a problem. Um, it means the station is just going to sit there and look pretty, and up until the point where we actually have boost, it's going to remain exactly as it is. 
Time to set up our management team. As we stand up Project Exodus operations, we're selecting our internal management team. I think scientists and engineers are going to be more useful. Um, the previous one I picked officers and operators, but I don't want to run that many ops this time around. I want to do more research. Recon complete. We have a bit of information that's going to lead to more xenology research. Objective complete and we get another bit of intel and more research. So I can now hire a third, sorry, a fourth counselor even. We've gained a significant support. Okay. Control point successful. Perfect. We have control over Belize. Um, it's a really fairly insignificant nation. It's just a stepping stone to get to Mexico. And once Grace starts running campaigns in Mexico, I should be able to start taking that fairly swiftly. Having her do campaigns here might work. It might not. I'm not sure. What I want to do is hire somebody from another... Um, Let's say another straight, another specific skill set. Maybe Majid Suleiman, for the reason that he has a fairly high admin stat. And that will allow me to take over organizations. So let's bring this tycoon on board. He can control, he can purge, he can defend interests, which is very valuable. He cannot... Huh. He cannot advise a country that's unfortunate because i would love for him to be able to advise using his admin stat each point of admin adds um i think more gdp to a country but i'm not 100 percent. alternatively if we don't get majid we got utkirikbek azarov azarov Hailing from uh, Uzbekistan, astronaut, gets some influence income, which is nice. Majid, oh Jesus, he gets a lot of influence. Okay, Majid, you're hired. Uh, the reason I'm hiring this guy is because this is a lot of influence a month, and I'm going to need that. Same for money. So he's going to come in very, very valuable, because money and influence are going to be my currencies to take over control of more territory. So let's get to work. Next part of the operation is to pick my advisory team. I have the option going with economic, uh, steely-eyed missile men and women, national investment points to spaceflight program and boost. Very valuable for what I'm doing. The generals are more military organized. International aid is welfare and knowledge. I think that for my particular playthrough here, this is the most useful. Because welfare is very handy. It generally boosts the capacities of a nation altogether. And the same as knowledge. More research, please. So let's go for emphasis on that. A little while later, I have completed the Skywatch program. Mostly in tandem with the rest of the nation, of or sorry, the rest of the world, of course. Now let's see where that takes us. Um, I'd rather not yet unlock missions to asteroids and missions to inner planets because I don't have any boost yet. And that goes for most of my other companion factions as well. I think augmented reality could be quite handy because this is going to make sure that eventually we'll get better at research. Space research, uh, for example. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with augmented reality. Augmented reality, prerequisite for a lot of other programs, which will boost my research. That is what I'm going for. And meanwhile, I have taken full control over both Guatemala and Belize. And I've created a custom Exodus template, control point template, focusing quite a bit on economy, knowledge, funding, and spaceflight program. Uh, military is not getting anything. Uh, neither is my ability to actually start building an army. I don't care about that. What I care about is research, 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 research. That's what we're going for. Hopefully, I'll be able to take control over Mexico. And once I have done that... We're going to start to roll out operations towards the first part of the United States. After a bit of campaigning and swapping out one of my counselors for somebody else, I've gained my first control point in the United States of America. In case you are new to Terra Invicta and you don't know how exactly this happened, I took control of two control points in Canada. I did some campaigning there, so that's public campaign, and then I took control. I took control over complete Mexico, so all four control points. I then fortified that with the Defend Interests mission. 
and also um, did a whole bunch of campaigns, so public support or, um, sorry, public campaign orders, by Grace in the US. And as my support is now at a point where I have 59%, I was able to throw in a bunch of influence and take over my first control point in the US. I very much doubt I'll be able to take control over all of them, because these control points come at a 27.13 cost against cap. That means I can take control of one more, and then I'm going to be in trouble. So I'm going to take control of as many as I can, but it does mean sacrificing the control points that I have over here in Belize, as well as Guatemala, and perhaps even Mexico. Because Mexico ones are currently costing me 13, so that's quite a nice amount of points that I can still swap out from this, and instead invest in the US. Taking control of the entire US would be far more powerful than getting Mexico, Belize, and the other, let's say, smaller, still developing countries over there. More importantly, perhaps, than all this meddling in nations' affairs, is that I now have boost. It is not a lot. It is an annual boost income of 4.5. But with a second control point, I get another 0.375, and that works for every single control point. It also means my research is getting a very nice buff. And as I gain more control points, of course, this also goes up. The Exodus situation over here, the Exodus uh, points mean that the knowledge is going to go up even more. And so is funding for space programs, the amount of boost that I'll be getting, and the amount of mission control. I currently only have two. I'm going to need quite a bit more. Because, well, we're early game. Um, I already have a space station, so that's the one that's currently taking up all of my mission control. But of course, we're going to need quite a lot more for the rest of this campaign. After some research, the Global Research Project Augmented Reality has been completed. This is the one that I selected. And that means I can set another one. So let's have a look at the tech tree. What else do I need? Space research could be an interesting project. It's going to open up the way towards directed space research, space agriculture, medicine, our space future. Based on what I am planning with this faction, I think we'll eventually, eventually have to get up to Titanic spacecraft. So let's make sure that space research becomes a priority for the entirety of humanity. It's going to mean that we're going to get access to, eventually, the Mobile Space Science Lab. This is going to be good news because it means I can potentially, later on, start working on a craft which will be able to start surveying planets and moons that I am interested in. As for right now, the alternative is deep space propulsion concepts allowing me to actually get there. But I think space research uh, and or space tourism to make sure I have a tourist berth for my own space station could be beneficial. Let's go for space research first. As for the US, I have now taken two control points. I had to give up both Guatemala and Belize. I am perfectly fine with this. And as I'm going to be taking my third control point, I am also going to have to start giving up Mexico. So Mexico, it was fun. Um, don't stay in Mexico for too long. Just go back to the United States because this is where the research is at. This is where the boost is at. And more importantly, this is where the armies are at. Because I now have control of a 4.5 military tech first armor division and same for the first infantry. These all have a, a navy attached so they can also go across the seas. This is critical if you want to start invading other countries. I currently don't have any plans yet but hey it's the United States. You never know where they're gonna show up. The eggheads have figured out that now we know what these alien signatures are and what they mean. Unfortunately the samples were too small and limited to give us any real understanding of the alien spacecraft. So it has left us with tantalizing clues. In other news, an alien survived the crash and has moved into the nearby wilderness territory. Oddly, we're receiving reports of disappearances in nearby communities. As yet, we have no explanation as to why. So we're going to have to look into that. We're going to have to do surveil missions and make sure that we start to understand more and more about these aliens. And that means I'm going to have to research Skywatch and Deep Skywatch to figure out where the aliens are currently. And then I'm going to have to engage one of these guys and salvage their technology. This is kind of where my humanity first playthrough stranded, because I simply wasn't playing the game, at least the space game, in a right category. I didn't have the right type of ships, I didn't have the right loadout, and I was trying to take on the mission perhaps a bit too soon. 
So this objective, it might take me five or six in-game years to actually complete. First, I want to use my boost and I want to try and get to a moon base, making sure that I get some information on that, making sure I get some resources from that, and slowly but steadily, we'll start to build up our space economy. My efforts in Canada's space program have paid off. Canada now has a space program, believe it or not, and this is perfect because it means they're going to be contributing to my boost, although it currently isn't that much yet. What they're contributing is 0 0.00278 per month. Of course, as you continue to develop their ability to launch rockets, it's going to go up, but it's not going to go up very quickly. The US, by contrast, is contributing 0 0.392 per month, and as I'm, re well, as I'm investing heavily in boost, this means it's going to go up a lot more very, very quickly. I'm trying to stabilize the US as much as possible. I have five control points now, and I think this is an excellent spot to be about six, seven months after the start of the game. What I'm also planning is getting to the moon. We're launching a mission to the moon research, and that's going to be completing on July 19th, but four days before, I'll know how to set up a command module on the moon. So first we're going to have to go to the moon, or rather we're going to have to inspect the moon for resources, which I believe shouldn't be too difficult, because the moon is relatively close, and um, well, we're first going to have to do that project of course, and then I think it's 10 or 12 days to get to the moon to survey it, and of course after that you're going to have to launch your outpost. That will take a bit more time. I'm already very much eyeing the Shackleton Crater, because it has somewhere between 0 and 10 water, or Peary Crater for zero, uh, 3 to 8. I don't care that much about fissiles yet, but if you look at water requirements, it's a key requirement when you're trying to make fuel. So it is very important that I get a spot on the moon early, and ideally I will get both. Which is also why I picked the US, because you get a lot of boost early game, and that can kickstart the rest of your campaign. At least, such is my hope. And right on schedule, we have completed the mission to the moon research. This is excellent. This is exactly what I want. Time to get to the moon. Time to go back to the moon, in fact. Let's send a probe. It's going to cost me a mere 0 0.5 boost, which is perfect. And in 19 days, we'll have all the information on the moon that we need. Of course, I'm not the only one going there. Other nations, other uh, factions are also very interested in going there. Let's have a look at what the other major powers are up to. We have humanity first in Russia. Surprise, surprise. They are working extremely hard on modernizing the Russian military. And uh, they seem to be just as much struggling as I was. Because they are really not moving the needle that much. They're also working very much on boost, but not mission control. What they are doing is building more armies and building a navy, so that they'll be able to start shipping those nation or those armies across the world. Quite dangerous. What about China? China is still open. It's not uncommon for this to happen, as it is a huge nation and it is very difficult to control because of that, especially early game. Another party that's quite interesting to keep an eye on, because it's quite a powerhouse as well, is India. Now, it's a bit of mayhem in India. You got two servant groups taking control of two points. The uh, academy just suffered their major crackdown because apparently the aliens do not come in peace. Surprise. And because of that, the aliens or the, the academy has become a lot less popular. People don't like it as much because maybe the academy was just flat out wrong. Convincing the aliens that you're equals, well, they shoot to kill, essentially. So that's not happening. They do have another control point, but I believe that the servants might take over this country, which will be fairly dangerous. And finally, Europe. What's happening here? France is very well secured by the Protectorate. Germany, mixed Protectorate and Academy. Poland. Interesting. Poland is held by the Initiative. And the Benelux is held by one Servant and two Cracked Downs Protectorate points. And finally the UK, which is a mix of Protectorate, Resistance and uh, Academy. 
So that begs the question, where is the resistance? If they're not here, if they're not over there... <laughs> they've taken Ukraine. <laughs> Which is something that Russia is still at war with. <laughs> okay, cool. You guys fight it out over there, yeah? That's fine. Um, this... nope. Where's the resistance at? Have they taken Japan or something? Yes, they've taken Japan. They've taken Japan, they've taken South... No, they have not taken South Korea. Interesting. There has to be an easier way to figure this out. Let's go to regions. Uh, sorry, no, relations, but... Oh, crap, I cannot set that. Here, manage. What do you have? You got Japan, Pakistan, Vietnam, Ukraine, Finland, Baltic states. They're all over the place. All over the place. Look at that. Interesting. I might, as opposed to previous playthrough, be interested in trying to build further relationships with one of my... How should I put this? Um, colleague factions. I'm not sure about the resistance or humanity first. They're a bit too extremist for my view. But the academy might be interesting. And I'm already allied with Germany, South Korea... Oh, sorry, Germany, United Kingdom and Italy. How about also allying Canada with South Korea? That could be useful. Um, when it comes to the US... When it comes to the US, I can't set it because I don't have that last control point. I have been contemplating taking the last control point of the US, getting full control over the US, and then giving up my control over Canada. I need to find about 27 control points, which I do not have. So the only option is to try and... or well, just to sacrifice Canada right now um, and get back into Canada later. Right now, that might be the best option because these two control points together, they give me, let's say, 15 research... Oh, sorry, 15 funding. Uh, they give me 20... no, 45 research-ish and a little bit of boost. This gives me more funding. It gives me much, much more research and a lot more boost. So let's take the last point of control in the United States. The probe has now made it to the moon, and with that I can see what sort of resources are where. Look at this amount of fissiles, that's a lot at Mare Imbrium. Let's go to the moon, and let's see if somebody else has already gotten there. The answer is no. The problem is, I need 9 boost in order to land one outpost. I don't have that much. I have 6. It's a start. I'm getting two per month. So let's say about one and a half months, 45 days, I should be able to launch our first base on Luna. It's just going to be a minor outpost. It'll not be there to mine stuff just yet. But hey, it's a start. So let's skip time a little bit more and wait for that to happen. It is now halfway through September 2023, and I now have the required boost to start my outpost. Interestingly, I am not the first one there. That's the Protectorate with Bismarck base. They have taken the fissiles. This apparently is the focal point of their approach. That's fine. That works for me. I'm going to go for Piri Crater. That means I'm going to get just about everything, a little bit of it, with the majority in metals. And um, ideally, I'll take Shackleton Crater next because it has that large water deposit. But for now, I'd rather just have a bit of everything. So we're going to found the outpost in Piri Crater, and that's going to take me 35 days as we're going to boost this outpost up from Earth. Um, this one I'm going to immediately rename. It's currently called Yamazaki Base. That is not very ideal. Uh, this is on the moon, and this is our first, uh, let's say, mining base one. Not very creative, but at least it'll make it a bit easier for me to figure out what its eventual purpose is going to be. As for Changong Station, I am tempted to start building additional stations here, additional labs, especially space science labs, because this is going to be the focal point of this campaign. Also, information science labs, as this boosts our investment in knowledge priority if the module is in Earth interface orbit, which it is. So um, I'm going to get a lot more boost to knowledge. And with that, I'll be able to start researching faster and faster and faster. But 
it's going to cost me one and a half boost just to build it. And if I would like to get another base on the moon, I'd maybe better save that boost for another time. So for now, sadly, no upgrades to Changgong Station. For now, just saving stuff for the moon. Now, I think that's going to be a final point here for this particular video. We have taken over the whole US in episode one. Episode two, we're going to continue our research. We're going to continue figuring out what the aliens are up to because our next objective is investigating the abductions and researching the origin. Where did these guys come from? It's going to take me a while, and especially uh, with all the other research projects that are popping up and that I would like to get into, it's going to take some time to get there. But then again, it's Terra and Victor. Don't expect this playthrough to be lasting five episodes. This is ideally going to run for a very, very long time. And I'll hope you'll be there for the ride. So subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys soon for the next video.